welcome. This lesson is about how to learn and practice the minor pentatonic scale guitar positions. There's a specific way to work on them that is super powerful for really getting them down, really internalizing them. That's what we're going to cover in this lesson. And I think this is an important lesson because um, you might very well know this standard minor pentatonic scale form and use it a lot, but what about the other four? There's five of them. We want to know them all equally. We want to be able to really use them all so we can play in any key all over the neck. And I'm going to do a specific exercise of how we work on these scales. That's really powerful. And that's what's going to unlo unlock those other four positions. So check it out. <laughs> I'm Jared Borkowski from SoundGuitarLessons.com. On this channel, I talk a lot about music theory, mapping out the fretboard, and practice strategies. This is part of a series of lessons that walks through a unique, specific way to work on the five scale patterns of many different types of scales in with a certain exercise that is hugely beneficial for internalizing the actual sound of scales. If you want to see any of the other uh, scale lessons, there's a link in the description to a playlist that will take you to all of those. So here are the five minor pentatonic scale guitar positions that we want to know really, really well. And again, you probably know at least one of these, but we want to know all of these. These are often called scale positions or scale patterns or scale forms or scale shapes. Those are all interchangeable. So keep in mind, there are other ways to play scales on the guitar. There are other uh, shapes or structures or ways to approach this, but these five particular scale forms, these positions, uh, these are the ones that at, at the very least we want to be very comfortable with knowing, and then we can experiment and branch out from there if we want to practice them in different ways. All five of the patterns here are written with the root as C, but you can move them around anywhere on the fretboard to play them in any minor key. So with each of these videos, I'm basically going over the same information. If you watched any of the other scale videos, more of the same information applying to a new scale type. That's because I want these scale videos to be a specific kind of source for if someone wants to learn that scale type. So I got to go over the same information again. We're talking about why we need kind of a unique solution to practicing scales on the guitar, this unique solution that I'm going to present to you here in this lesson. The reason is that we play in positions. We have these scale forms. And with these scale forms in these positions, the root of the scale is not automatically the lowest and highest note. So we end up playing up and down these scale forms, um, hearing the collection of notes, but not really hearing the true kind of grounded tonality of the actual scale or key that we're trying to play because the root is not getting priority. And that's what the root is, is supposed to have. It's supposed to have uh, kind of the home base sound to it. Unless someone's practicing modes or particular exercises or melodic patterns, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit, unless we are doing those kinds of things on other instruments, we wouldn't practice scales without starting on the root and having the root be the highest note and you know really have it sound like a scale. Every other instrument you would do that, like on the piano. Again, unless you're doing a mode or an exercise that uh, calls for something different. So on the guitar, to internalize the real sound of the scale and huge bonus to really map out the fretboard to really actually see where all the roots are in the scale, not just these low notes, but really everywhere in the scale, we need to treat the root differently than we treat the other notes. This is gonna ha help us really hear what's actually going on. And this is amazing because this is what allows us to see how the same physical scale form can be turned into, can be treated as and sound like a, a totally different scale type. Same physical notes, same collection of notes, but a different scale type. And that's what modes are. For example, these five minor pentatonic scale guitar patterns, they are the exact same physical scale forms as the major pentatonic scale shapes. And the last video I did for this series was the major pentatonic scale. So they're the same exact collection of notes. They are the ex same exact physical five scale forms. So when is it one? When is it the other? It's 100% about the root, about what is the root and what are you treating as the root? Uh, is it sounding that way? It, it makes all the difference in the world. Not only does it sound distinctly different, and you're going to hear it in a minute because I'm going to play the example for you. And when you play it yourself, you'll, you'll certainly, certainly hear it as well. Not only that, it sounds so different, but it actually like looks different and feels different on the fretboard. When you are thinking of the home bass note being in a different place, it kind of transforms how we're how we are orienting ourselves on the fretboard. It doesn't look the same. You can't just bank on knowing the minor pentatonic scale shape really well and assuming that means that we'll know the major pentatonic scale. Nope, doesn't work. We have to really think of it as its own thing. So to make the minor scale, the minor pentatonic scale, we treat 
the root in a certain place. To make it the major pentatonic scale, we treat it in another place. If you want to hear the difference between those two, compare my demonstration that I'm going to do in this video to the one I did in the last video. Just check out the playlist link. But let's get on to talking about the rules of how to do the root to root method, and then I'll just play the demonstration for you. So this is how it works. It's called the root to root exercise or the root to root method. And this is how we're going to play our scales to really hear it in this way that I'm describing. You're always going to start on the lowest root in whatever scale form, start on the lowest root. Okay, you are going to play every scale in the scale form. Just we got to make sure we play every scale in the scale form. When you hit a root, when you land on a root, you're going to play it twice. You're going to play it a second time and then keep going the direction that you were going. You can pause and keep going, or you can just keep going without pausing. I like to pause a little bit usually. Um, so we're going to repeat the roots. You're definitely very important not going to repeat any other notes. So we're treating the root differently. This is what's going to make it stand out. This is what is very much going to make it sound like the root. So we don't want to repeat any other notes. So don't repeat those notes that are on the outside of the scale, the lowest note and the highest note, which we kind of commonly do by habit. Don't repeat those unless they happen to be the root. And then the final rule is that we want to end on the same root that we started on after playing the entire scale form. So we want to play any notes that are below the root as we come back down, go below, come back up, land on that same root we started on. So that's it. Now I'm just going to go through and demonstrate it for you so you can really hear it so you can see it. And then this is exactly how I want you to be able to play it yourself with all five of these minor to pentatonic scale guitar forms. I want you to be able to play it this way. Here's how it goes. <laughs> If you're familiar with how those five scale forms are the same exact physical scale forms as the major pentatonic scale, just notice how distinctly minor it was sounding. It sounded so minor. I mean, we're, we're very used to that sound. We know that sound. But the major pentatonic scale sounds so different. It sounds so major. Check out that last video that, that I did for that demonstration um, as well, and, and certainly work on both of those. If you want to know your minor pentatonic scale well, you will know it even better if you also can play it as the major pentatonic scale, the same physical shape. You're going to have that much more control over it. So once you get that down, here are the next steps to take to really continue to work on mastering these scales and really have them down. The first thing is to just make sure you do that in every key. Take your time. Just make a list for yourself. One day you do it in one, all five scale forms in one key, you know, off of one root, and eventually do it off of all 12 roots, just so you know that you at some point have played all five scale forms in every possible place that you can play it. You don't have to do an all-in-one session or whatever, but uh, that's really that's really comforting to do that. Yeah, if you keep going through the list, you can kind of keep practicing, um, kind of repeating through in an organized way the 12 keys, but definitely be able to do that root to root practice through all five of those at some point through all 12 keys. The next thing to be able to do when working on scales and getting them down and really getting them fluent so we can use them in music is to be able to use melodic patterns with them. So melodic patterns are taking the scale and breaking it up melodically so it's not just only linear, so it's not just only stepwise, and do, you know creating a little pattern and then repeating that through the scale. So the first pattern that I always recommend people uh, work on, and I recommend we, we know at least a few on any scale that we're working on, but the first one I always recommend is usually called melodic thirds, but in the pentatonic scale it's not exactly that. It's just a pattern where we skip up a note, we come down one note, we skip up, come down one, skip up. So with the most common form that we're used to it would be this sound. <laughs> melodic patterns you don't have to do the root to root thing that happened to be the lowest 
the root was the lowest note on that one. But we already we have the root to root exercise for that. So when we're doing melodic patterns, you, you just want to kind of work on the actual pattern through the entire scale form. That exact melodic pattern in a pentatonic scale right there I have written out in uh, notation and tabs on a free PDF sheet that is the top three pentatonic scale guitar patterns uh, for playing improvisations and solos more melodically, making them sound less like scales. Um, that's one of them, and I have it written out. So if you want a little uh, sheet that's just a couple exercises, kind of nice to practice with, download that. It's in the link in the description. The third thing to do to make sure you're really working on your scales and kind of getting to that level you want to get is just make sure you can do it with a metronome at a pace. We're not working on speed, but just be able to play so it's at a comfortable pace where you're not having to think or hesitate between the notes. That's really important. And the fourth thing to really work on as you're working on your scales is improvise with each scale form. And this is perfect because we just did the root to root method stuff. We're going to improvise with each scale form and really heavily emphasize the root, even like overly emphasize it because we want to kind of get that down, get that sound down, treat it as the home base, um, really come back to that note a lot. So at least be able to improvise with every scale shape that we have here where you're really working on landing on each of those roots that exist all over the guitar. Again, this is what will make it sound like you're actually improvising in minor pentatonic or major pentatonic or natural minor or just the major scale or whatever. And th that's why I'm doing all these videos on all these scale types because they're all so different, they all need to be treated differently. Three other quick things just to take into consideration as reminders, as much as possible, make sure you're alternate picking. You're going down, up, alternating with the pick and or alternating two fingers or a finger and a thumb if you're doing finger style. So alternating, don't end up going down, 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 down a bunch or, you know, I, 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 I with the, with the finger. Um, the other thing to be watching out for is just your tone, your tone, how much are you gripping? How much, how hard are you hitting? Is there buzzes? Uh, stuff like that is they're rattling stuff like that and the third thing to take into consideration is playing legato and smooth between the notes making sure there's not a big gap between the notes at least at least working towards that at first with technique there needs to be sometimes that's okay we want the notes to have kind of a smooth connection as much as possible if you work on and map out these five minor pentatonic scale guitar positions in this way that we talked about it's just going to be a game changer you're going to have a much easier time learning new stuff, especially melodic material. You'll remember it longer. You'll know where you are on the fretboard. You'll know where you are in the scale and in the key, and you'll start to see how any musical idea is related to scale structures. And we want to do this process on any scale that we're interested in working on and learning. That's why I'm doing this series of kind of walking through this same process in a bunch of different scale types and kind of reiterating the same information. It's good practice for me too. I mean, when we practice, we need to repeat so much. I think when we learn, we need to hear a lot of the same information too. I can think of so many times where I'm learning something and it's not till the third time that I hear it that I'm like starting to really understand or be able to kind of work on it in a way that feels like I'm actually learning it or knowing it. So hopefully that helps too if you watch several, several of these videos. My next one is going to be walking through this same process with the blues scale. So of course I could just say, okay, that's minor pentatonic scale, add the blues note. And I've done that before, but I think it's very important to give these same demonstrations with the specifics, with the with every uh, difference of the scale and not just assume that we can learn one thing and then know everything about how to manipulate it into other applications. Plus the blues scale has some interesting quirks about it with positioning that I'm excited to show you. There's kind of a reason that people only use that one main blues scale uh, position. Well, there's five of them. We're going to learn all of those. That's the next video. Like I mentioned already, if you want to grab that PDF of the top three pentatonic scale patterns for more melodic soloing, making solos and improvisations sound less like scales, more like melodies, just a simple little exercise sheet that's really nice. Just use the link in the description or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash three patterns. That's number three patterns. That's it for this lesson. Make sure you're subscribed and you hit that bell. Happy scale practicing. Thanks for watching. Take care.